Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Brett King from Brett King Steam. Uh, I'm a steampunk maker. I've been doing steampunk uh, for about eight years uh, as both both a maker and a costumer. Uh, I would normally be dressed in my Wild West gear for uh, revealing my Wild West steampunk um, arcade cabinet, but uh, it is pretty hot here in my garage, so I'm dressed in what I call steampunk casual today. So uh, I wanted to take you through um, one of my latest projects, uh, my biggest project to date, or at least uh, um, uh, my most time consuming project. Uh, I've been working on it for uh, since last September, I guess. Uh, so about nine months, eight months, something like that. And uh, really kicked it into high gear during quarantine. Uh, so uh, that, that part has been uh, good. I've had time to work over in my workshop. Uh, on this and then I, I recently a couple of weeks ago brought it into my garage to uh, do some finishing work on it before I take it into the house. So um, what this idea started as is uh, I, I've always been into kind of old style arcade games, you know, Pac-Man, uh, Joust was uh, one of my favorites, Tron, uh, you know, games like that that you used to play in the arcade back in the 80s and uh, a lot of people um, build their own arcade cabinets. Uh, so uh, they kind of customize it the way they want. They set it up so it can play multiple games. And I thought, well, it'd be cool to do a steampunk uh, version of that. And so I started kind of looking around for inspiration. My, my design process is that I, I uh, kind of come up with an idea, a core of an idea, a kernel of an idea, and then I start doing research on it. Uh, I, I jump on Wikipedia, I go to the internet, and I start looking for historical counterparts to the project that I'm trying to do. And uh, that that uh, I, I like to incorporate story into my uh, into my works and uh, background. I think that's one of the things that makes steampunk kind of different is the uh, the artist actually has a story uh, a lot of times behind their artwork. It's not just an aesthetic, and so. Uh, I, I try to find uh, story elements that I can incorporate into what I'm doing and uh, base it in some reality. So it has a, a feeling of something that could have existed but didn't. And so in the case of a steampunk arcade cabinet, my mind immediately went to uh, Penny Arcades, which were old cabinets that they used to have uh, in uh, the Victorian era, uh, starting from you know around the 1860s, 1870s. Uh, and they started as music cabinets uh, where uh, you could go in and, and uh, take a, put a coin in essentially what's a large music box that was played with a, a, a tin disc on it. Uh, and you could play a tune in the hotel or saloon or, uh, you know, uh, you know, wherever the location was. Or in, in some cases, people in, in uh, uh, more wealthy people had them in their in their homes. And so. And that's kind of where it started with Penny Arcade was playing music. Uh, and eventually it moved into, you know, video with uh, Thomas Edison and the Mutoscope, which was a, a way of uh, generating motion pictures with uh, pieces of paper that flipped through really fast doing animation. Uh, and uh, then that evolved eventually into uh, coin operated games uh, in the, you know, the 1920s, 1930s. They started off with things like baseball and football and things like that. Uh, common games that you would recognize, but you know, made in an arcade format, and those eventually evolved into the arcade games uh, of the electronic era. So uh, that was kind of the progression of arcade cabinets. And so I wanted to go back to that uh, original sort of uh, um, you know penny arcade kind of feel. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I, I love the the Wild West theme uh, mixed with steampunk, and so uh, I kind of imagined. You know, what if uh, you know you set this in a saloon in the 1800s, uh, and uh, you know a, a cowboy walked in through the saloon doors and saw this arcade cabinet sitting there, and and went up and and cranked it up and uh, played uh, you know a, 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 an early arcade game on this cabinet. What would that look like? And so that was kind of what inspired my experience. And then from an aesthetic perspective, I looked at some actual penny arcades in particular. Uh, I found a German one uh, online, and I'll, I'll post a link to this uh, to some of these things I'm talking about over on my um, Facebook page at, at Brett King Steam, uh, so you can take a look. But there was a, uh, a Penny Arcade cabinet that was, um, if you've ever seen a Regina music player, it, it uses a metal disc 
uh, that has a bunch of notches in it and it's wind up and, and then as it spins, those notches play music. So this was a large scale version of one of those. It had a huge 24, 36 inch uh, disc in the bottom of it. And uh, uh, it was a very elaborate piece of furniture and uh, it had a, uh, a scene in it that had a, uh, some horses running through the fields, uh, which were kind of like, um, and, and they were animated uh, figures, uh, you know, real physical miniature figures moving across the screen, kind of like if you've ever been to a carnival and played one of those games where there's a horse race and you, you shoot with a squirt gun uh, into the game and the horses uh, kind of advance across the thing. That's kind of the setup it was. A lot of these penny arcades, to make them more interesting, had these automatons uh, built into it so that uh, you could see something visually happening, you know, a scene kind of play out while the music was playing. And so I wanted to incorporate that uh, into the uh, design as well. Uh, that part is not in here yet. Uh, that I've got about three things left to do on this arcade cabinet. So you're seeing kind of a sneak preview rather than a, a premiere of it. But uh, if you, you know, uh, follow along on Facebook, you'll see a full video once I get that uh, piece of it done. So anyway, this, this German cabinet uh, had the, the giant music player and, and the elaborate woodwork and this scene of horses running across a field. And so that was kind of the, the visual inspiration uh, for this. And so I started, uh, I always start uh, all my projects with a drawing, uh, either a physical drawing or a digital drawing. And so in this case, it was with um, Corel Draw and so I'll, I'll show you, see if I can hold this up here so you can see. Uh, there's a, a picture of the drawing in Corel Draw kind of from the front of what I imagined. And then I did uh, the same thing from the side. And since Joust was my favorite game, I, I went with kind of a Joust theme uh, to it. So you can see, if you've ever played the game Joust, it's a, a game about um, these knights that ride ostriches, flying ostriches, which is in itself kind of a very steampunk thing. And uh, they fly through this underground chamber over top of lava, uh, jousting on their ostriches. So I wanted to do kind of a steampunk version of that. And so anyway, I, I drew it out on uh, Corel Draw. And uh, the reason I used Corel Draw was because it's one I'm familiar with, but also because I could put in all the measurements uh, kind of exactly as I wanted them and how I would translate them into wood uh, and metal. And uh, so it worked pretty well for that, um, except I had to do a front view and a side view and then sort of interpolate uh, in between when translating it to 3D. If I had to do it over again, I might do it in a 3D program like Tinkercad or uh, you know something like that, a, a CAD program so that I could actually render it in 3D. Uh, I, I made a lot of mistakes, to be honest, on this cabinet. It's my first big woodworking project, and it's the first time that um, uh, that I ever uh, had to translate these these 2D things into 3D in this way. And so, uh, having it in 3D to begin with, I would have uh, been able to notice some clearance issues and, and things like that that uh, you know I, I just couldn't see in 2D or couldn't see until I'd put things together. So. Uh, anyway, that, that's kind of how I started with that design, and then I started collecting pieces for it. So um, with that, I'll uh, kind of show you the cabinet, and then I'll start talking about some of the different parts and some of the challenges that I had uh, with the cabinet and, and some of the kind of story elements to it. So uh, this is Kincaid, and uh, I, I started with the control panel here, and I'll, I'll probably have to bring the... Uh, uh, the camera over so you can see it a little better, but uh, the control panel was the first thing I built, and uh, it's it's got a number of uh, kind of steampunk elements to it. Uh, I wrapped the uh, the joysticks in leather, red leather, and I put these leather pads with uh, uh, with rivets, uh, you know, brass rivets or, or studs, uh, really upholstery uh, nails around it. So there's like a, a wrist pad there, uh, and I did some staining on the uh, uh, on the control panel to kind of put some directional arrows. So it's got kind of a compass kind of look uh, around the joystick, so you know which way you're going. And then I also carried that compass motif uh, onto the trackball in the center. And again, I'll, I'll uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit with the camera here in a minute. But uh, well, let me let me go ahead and try that now. So apologies if I 
mess this up a little bit, but let me zoom in here. So this is the control panel and you can see the leather wrap steering or the leather wrap joysticks, leather wrap pads. Uh, this is the track ball. And this is actually an antique billiard ball uh, that's in here. And I found out that they happen to be the exact same size as a track ball uh, for an arcade cabinet. And then you've got some buttons and things for player one and player two. And uh, down here are the coin buttons. And then these are the speakers. Uh, so the speakers are behind those, uh, those upholstery uh, pieces and, and brass pieces that I uh, found, decorative brass pieces. And so that kind of gives the look of an antique radio uh, speaker behind those, uh, behind uh, that upholstery. So that was the first kind of piece that I did uh, was uh, that. Uh, then the next thing I did was the sign here, King Cade. And so I had a kind of what I thought was a cool idea for that. And I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see this is glass. And uh, this is called Lux for Glass. Uh, it was um, used in, uh, actually invented by Frank Lloyd Wright um, back in the 1920s. And they used it in uh, uh, dis uh, display windows, store windows, to help bring additional light into the shop. It reflected light uh, into the shop. And so I thought it would make kind of a cool look like kind of like the scan lines on an old computer monitor uh, to have that. And then I put, uh, I 3D printed some patterns behind it that I could put amber colored marbles uh, into these, uh, this plastic frame and then put the glass in front of it. And so the effect is it looks kind of like an, an analog uh, digital display, um, but it's, it's actually glass and amber marbles. Uh, and then it's lit behind by Edison bulbs. And then you can see I've got some uh, lamp finials on the top there that kind of uh, go along with the king uh, theme. It's, it's got kind of a, a crown on top. And I'll just kind of work my way down here. Uh, I mentioned joust and flying ostriches. I found these great um, uh, uh, hangers that were uh, geese. And so I then took a, a little um, surround from a a knob pull or door pull and put it on there and made it look like an ostrich. So I've got two ostrich uh, hangers there that you can hang your coat on or hang your, uh, your gun belt on as you're playing the game. Uh, this right now is a shelf uh, for your whiskey glasses or your spittoon, but that's where the animated scene is gonna go. I'm gonna do a, uh, an animated scene of uh, a jousting ostrich flying uh, through the underground cave, jousting other ostriches. So. Uh, that's going to go in there. It's going to be an automaton. So moving down, uh, we get to the saloon doors. So the saloon doors uh, were as a, meant as a way to kind of protect the uh, protect the monitor. These are made out of walnut uh, and pine slats. This is molding, uh, like uh, wall molding, that uh, I painted and and I kind of designed these from from scratch. Uh, again, this is all, you know, woodworking that I'd never done before, but uh, I liked how those came out. And then inside, we have the monitor. And so the monitor is uh, a vintage CRT monitor. So it's a 21-inch a CRT monitor. It weighs about uh, 70 pounds. It's gigantic. Uh, they're, they're actually very hard to find now, but if you want kind of an authentic look like an arcade uh, monitor, you have to get the CRTs uh, so that um, they have kind of that same, uh, same look and feel. So uh, that's what's on there. It's surrounded with this uh, thin walnut bezel and there's some buttons, uh, vintage buttons I added here that push through and, and push the buttons on the monitor. So if I need to adjust the brightness or something, I can do that uh, with those vintage buttons. And then you can see there's some leather uh, curtains here. And what those leather curtains are is uh, covering the gaps in the bezel because arcade games can either be horizontal uh, mode or vertical portrait mode. And so I wanted to be able to do both. And so I made it so that the monitor can rotate. So you can see I've now rotated the monitor. So if I wanted to play a game like Frogger or something like that that's vertical, uh, I can do that. Now, that was actually one of the harder things to do 
because if we walk around the back here, you can see the contraption, the, the framework that I built to rotate this monitor. So I said the monitor weighs about 70 pounds. So it's not real easy to rotate. Uh, there's a, a bicycle wheel on there and I put some wheels underneath it uh, and so that it'll rotate on those wheels. And then there's a, a heavyweight Lazy Susan uh, on the back uh, all so that that monitor can rotate. So uh, that, was, that was pretty tricky. Uh, other little touch I added from a historical perspective is you see some scoring beads here. Uh, these are vintage scoring beads that would have been over a, a billiards table uh, back in the day. And <clears throat> as you scored points, you'd slide your beads over. And so that's <clears throat> how you would uh, you know, keep track of how many games you'd won. Um, Billy the Kid, when he played this, he just used his knife and notched, uh, notched things in the, <clears throat> uh, in the console there. So he didn't bother with the scoring, <clears throat> scoring beads. So, uh, but he was kind of an outlaw that way. So let me see how I'm doing on time here. All right, I got about nine minutes. So let me keep moving down here. So uh, this shelf is where the uh, glasses are actually gonna go, the, your whiskey glasses and so on. There's a pull-out drawer here for putting a keyboard on. Uh, so uh, if I uh, have a computer or something inside or a keyboard to access the, uh, <clears throat> the access the computer, I can put it in there. And then down here at the bottom, I mentioned the music disc. So my theory was if you had a computer disc in the 1800s, it would look kind of like this, which is an antique music disc. And that would encode the program that would play the game. And so uh, what I did was I actually got, I had an antique phonograph motor laying around. And so I mounted the antique phonograph motor behind this and I put a, a handle on it here. And so if I crank this up and then give it a little spin, uh, you can see it'll rotate. And so that's the, uh, the arcade machine reading the antique computer program so that it can play the game. So that'll just keep running until, uh, until the, the spring winds down. And then kind of a final touch here was, uh, you know, if you're going to be standing there playing the game, drinking your whiskey, you need the, uh, <clears throat> a foot rest to put your, put your boot up on. And so, I found a vintage uh, foot rail that uh, I mounted on the bottom uh, so you can uh, rest your foot on it while you're playing. The cabinet itself is made out of mahogany. Uh, you know, again, I mentioned that this was the first big woodworking project I've done. And you know, this started off as raw mahogany board, and I used a lot of different planing techniques from everything from a uh, borrowing a friend's automatic planer to using an old hand push plane <clears throat> on it so that I get kind of a, a rough look to it. And, uh, you know, I had to uh, plane it so that the boards were all the same thickness, same level, and then uh, join them together uh, using joining techniques that I found on the internet. There's a, a great uh, YouTube site called Woodworking for Mortals uh, that gives you all kinds of tips and things on, you know, how to do woodworking and things like uh, joining wood together so that you can, you know, make great big planks like that that you need uh, for the, uh, the sides of the cabinet. Oh, one last touch. Uh, this is my cup holder or spittoon holder. And uh, there's gonna be two of these, there's gonna be one on the other side. And this is an articulated arm from a Victorian gas lamp. And so it makes nice cup holders. So as you're playing the game, you can stick your glass of whiskey or your spittoon there on the side and position it wherever you'd like so that you have easy access to it while you're playing the game. So I think that about covers everything. The uh, things that I still have left to do is, uh, again, I'll be putting the, uh, the animated scene here, the Joust scene here. Uh, on the side of the cabinet will be the Joust logo.
steampunk style. So instead of a, a knight, it's going to be a cowboy. And here's the drawing I have of that. And so what I've done is I, I took that and I then colorized it and printed it out. And I'm going to be uh, creating a sign essentially out of brass, copper, and aluminum, and then mounting that on the side of the cabinet. So uh, that piece has less uh, I have left to do. And then finally, I'm going to be putting on some bottle holders uh, right down here at the bottom. And the bottle holders will be for holding your whiskey bottle uh, or your, your soda bottle. And they're going to look like antique uh, billiard ball pockets. So they'll be uh, red leather pockets uh, that, uh, you know, have kind of a mesh on the bottom and you'll be able to put your, your whiskey glass in there. So uh, that is the project. It is called Kincaid. And the uh, main game it plays is... Uh, Ostrich Riders in the Sky, or Joust, as, uh, as it's more formally known. So, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll jump over here and see if there are any questions going on in chat. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So, thank you for the, uh, the nice comments, everyone. And uh, I do hope to be able to take this to uh, some conventions uh, in the future. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, next COGS Expo or uh, <clears throat> maybe even Wild Wild West Con out in Tucson, Arizona. If you've ever been there, this would be uh, kind of an ideal scenario for, uh, or an ideal uh, prop for Wild Wild West Con, uh, which is set in a, a movie studio that's uh, used for uh, filming Western movies. So. Um, Anyway, I, I do hope to be able to take it out some. Uh, if I don't take the entire cabinet, which uh, you know might be a little difficult to transport, the console here uh, actually detaches. And so I can just take the console and the console is fully playable. And so I can just take that and hook it up to a, a monitor somewhere uh, for easier transportation. Let's see if there are any other questions. Okay. Well, again, uh, you know, thank you everyone for, for coming and, and seeing the progress I've made on. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out so far. And uh, like I said, just a few more th things to go and then I'll do some videos and uh, you know, some, some good pictures of it, get it in a nicer setting than my garage to take pictures of. And then I'll post it on my Facebook page and Instagram. So you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, it's all at Brett King Steam. Uh, so anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And here in a couple of minutes, uh, we'll be starting with our next presenter. So uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll hang around for a few minutes uh, uh, on the chat and, and then also to see the next uh, presenter as well. So thanks, everybody. <laughs>